Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and in this video I am once again taking a crack at the ISS to Station 5 challenge. The big challenge in this mission is the fact that we're super far out of plane with the Station 5, so the transfer doing a direct plane change maneuver would cost something like 8,500 to 9,000 Delta V, something like that. And what we're trying to do instead in this particular attempt on this challenge is to lower our orbit down into the atmosphere and use the dynamic pressure that we get from the atmosphere to help steer ourselves in the plane with the Station 5. So with all that said, let's jump back into it and continue our flight. Let me switch camera views here and jump inside the XR2. So in the last video, I paused kind of mid-maneuver because we were coming up on 20 minutes on the video, so let me just go ahead and unpause and continue on. So we finished our third pass through the atmosphere and we're climbing out. We're currently about 80 kilometers. We're climbing out at about 100 meters per second. We have a little bit of main engine going right now because we're trying to drive our apoapsis back up to around 260 kilometers because that seems to be working for us pretty well. We're still getting a little bit of uh, gain on this pass, so this pass isn't completely done with. But we're coming up to the end of it because we're you know, at 82 kilometers, and by the time we get much above 90, then our rate's going to be zero. So 250 on the APA, so I'm going to kill the engines here pretty quick, about right there. And you can see that our APA is coming down a little bit because we are still, you know, getting some amount of dynamic pressure. If we bring up surface, you can see, you know, uh, 250 pascals and going down. And you'll see by the time we get up to, uh, it's a little past 90 kilometers, I believe, you know, we'll pretty much be at zero and our rate will drop to zero and we're not getting any more benefit. But let me look at orbit MFD again. And let me just put in maybe just a little bit more main engine. Because uh, on the previous passes, we've been right around 90 kilometers. We're at around this altitude and then by the time we get done with our maneuvers and whatnot, this tends to climb up a few more kilometers, and that's that's been working out, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. So you can see the dynamic pressure is getting really low. We're at that 90 kilometer mark, and the rate's almost zero. So we've got just about all the gain that we're going to get out of this pass. So let's go ahead and uh, warp time forward. Let's climb out slowly at 10x while we're still getting some pressure here. And uh, yeah, that's just about it. So 110 kilometers, 115. And I guess that's why 120 kilometers is entry interface because that's when your dynamic pressure starts to uh, starts to reach a number. All right, so just like last time, I'm gonna go ahead and warp time forward till I'm about halfway between the nodes. About right there. And now we're going to take a look at our numbers and compare how we did on this pass. So let me bring up burn time calculator. And yes, RCS is enabled. So we are at 7,920 on our DV remaining. And we're at 31.24. So 7,920. So let me use that number first. So after the third pass, we had 7,920. And the relative inclination is 31.24. Okay, so let's see what this cost us. So let's go um, see. I, I should be smart and set these formulas up, but I'm, I'm stupid, so I'm not doing it. So 59 minus. All right, let's actually be smart. So let's say... So it's going to be C59 minus C60. That's going to be the same every time. So, and then, you know what? I should have done that here. So I'm just locking in these cells so they don't change. Okay, so then I'll copy paste that. And then all I have to change is the last number, 7920. That does not seem right to me. That's not right. Okay, I know why, because I'm missing one. Minus C... 62. 
Okay, so that one was a bit more expensive. Um, that's not terribly surprising to me because I made a mistake, a little bit of a small mistake on that pass. But let's also find out what kind of gain we got. So we went from 43.17 to 31.24. So at least we got decent gain. So 11.93. And I think here's where I'm keeping track of our gain. Yeah, so let me just do that again. plus 11.93. So far we've gained 35.07. And I don't know what I was keeping track of there. Oh yeah, total delta V used. Um, so that's just gonna be 10.6. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and jump back into it. So we are going to need another pass, we know for sure. So let's insert and we'll probably need a fourth, a fifth pass, but Let's just go ahead and uh, get this set up for now. Fourth pass, and now we'll get back into things. So let's switch camera views here. Okay, so that was <clears throat> that's how much we used on that pass. So now everything that we use from this point going forward will be considered the cost of pass number four. All right, so the time to the descending node is uh, about 1,200 seconds. The time to the apoapsis is about 500 and some change. So just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and warp time forward, get pretty close to the apoapsis, and then we're going to go outward, and we're going to move our apoapsis forward, just like we did in the previous attempts, or in the previous passes. So let's kill a rotate. Let's go level. I wish there was an autopilot for outward. We have prograde, retrograde, normal plus, normal minus. We need inward, outward autopilots. And about right here. And we're going to want to raise our PEA at the same time. So we'll be slightly inward of, you know, instead of being perfectly outward, we'll be slightly inward. So about right, start about right here. But I want to get maybe a bit closer to the apoapsis. Uh, actually, it probably doesn't matter. So let me go ahead and... No, it's not going to matter. So let me go ahead and put in some main engine. And... Cancel that because I can see my PEA going down. So I need to be a bit more inward. Okay, so that, so I'm slowly rotating inward until I can see my PEA going up, now it's going up. So I'm going to add in some more main engine, trying to watch three things at once here. I'm trying to make sure my rate doesn't go positive. So my APT is 400, so 600, so a, couple, a little bit more to go. PEA is starting to go down, so I need to be more inward. Okay, PA is going up, 500. So I'm looking for PA starting to go down. So I think I might actually primarily mess with the PEA after the fact because I think it's more important to make sure that my apoapsis is cl more closely timed to the node. Okay, so it was 630, 633. Oh, I almost overshot it again. I think that I think they're actually really close now. Yeah, they're super close to being perfectly lined up. All right, now let's rotate toward prograde. And let's warp time forward over to the apoapsis. And at that point, we'll fix up our periapsis. Okay, so we're really close to that point. Let's go to real time. Let's rotate over to proper prograde. And a little bit more time warp just to get really close to the apoapsis. Uh, we will use a little bit main engine this time. Last time we were at like 40 kilometers. This time we're quite a bit lower than that. 
It's a little bit of main engine to bring that up, although our apoapsis is actually... That's fine. I'm not going to mess with it beyond that. But our apoapsis is a little bit higher than it has been. But I think that's okay. All right, let's go ahead now and warp time forward for pass number four. And we can get away with quite a bit of time warp until, you know, we're down around 150, then we want to make sure we come out of time warp. We go down to 10 at this point. And I'm going to go back to real time. I'm going to kill rotate here. And then just a bit more on the time warp. Okay, so this time... But yeah, it looks like we're timing this pretty well in terms of, you know, arriving ahead of the node, but not too far ahead of the node. So I think, I think we're, I think these, uh, I think these passes are working out. Um, there's definitely room for improvement. There's probably always room for improvement. But we're, I think we're doing this pretty well. Okay, so we're 85 kilometers, we're negative 58 on our vertical speed. And so around 77 kilometers, about here, I want to come out of time warp. I'm going to rotate a bit. I probably should even maybe done that a little bit sooner, but I think it'll be okay. But I just want to make sure that I don't dive way down below 75 kilometers because then you just start getting a lot of dynamic pressure. And while that does improve your rate, um, I don't know how, I, I just, I don't know what the right balance is between, you know, how low should you go versus, you know, how much is that going to cost you? But at least at the moment, we know for sure we are on the right side of the equation because we've only spent, you know, a little over a thousand Delta V and we've gained 35 on a relative inclination, which would have cost us over 4,000 Delta V if we had done it. Um, you know, if we had done it using the main engine at a node. The, I mean, the nice thing about using the powerful main engines at these nodes is that you can just do it. It takes a few seconds of your real life, whereas this type of maneuver is a complete time vampire. But, uh, you know, hey, we love this stuff, right? That's why we're doing it. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to the node. Um, vertical speed's really close to zero. I like that. And we didn't get distracted with other things, so we're holding on around 75 kilometers. I like that. Rate is negative 0.023. Everything feels stable. I'm curious what my AOA is. So my AOA, is, again, it's just a sl slightly above 15. I'm not going to mess with it. I learned my lesson on that. Okay, so 75 kilometers, rate is about zero, really close to it. And we'll continue pretty much how we are at the moment until we arrive at the node, at which point, you know, we'll start to roll out and climb out slowly. Looks like we're, you know, I think we're doing better on this pass in terms of, uh, you know, we're not getting as much orbit decay. Okay, so we're just a, we're slightly below 75 kilometers according to that number. So I'm going to go ahead and start rolling out now just to make sure that my vertical speed is a, a zero or just barely positive. About 105 seconds until we arrive at the node. Honestly, rather than that number I really should just have like a I should just have a dynamic pressure up and just you know go by that but it's I need to have orbit MFD open and I don't really want to do external MFDs because I've been having um, reliability problems with orbiter and when I have external MFDs open orbiter has been crashing on me it doesn't happen all the time but often enough that I don't want to risk it not while I'm recording a video 
Okay, so we're almost at the node. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit of main engine now. Start offsetting the uh, the decay, the orbital decay that we're experiencing. About three clicks, it looks like, is gonna take us back up. So altitude right around 75 kilometers, vertical speed right around zero, coming up to the node, have a rate of negative 0 0.026. Everything is looking good. Just trying to keep that vertical speed under control. I want to keep right here around that 75 kilometer mark as we're passing through the node. And we're getting about negative 0 0.026 uh, gain. And if we get the same gain that we were getting, we should be at, let me think here, should be under 20 by the time we're done with this pass, probably around 19, something like that. No, actually, probably closer to 17. All right, so we're just past the node, so I'm going to go ahead and roll out just a little bit. Start increasing our vertical speed so that we're, you know, climbing slowly back up out. About negative 0.026 has been pretty close to what we're holding at, 25, 26, 27, somewhere in that neighborhood. And you can see our, our PEA coming up. We have three clicks of main engine just to keep our orbit from decaying on us. Holding on here at about a 15 degree angle of attack, which is, you know, verifiably the best angle of attack for this type of thing. If you're any higher than 15, your rate will go down, which means you're just getting drag for no reason. And if you're lower than 14, likewise, your rate will go down. You're just experiencing extra drag and you're not getting the benefit from it. So re really important to hold on to a 15 degree angle of attack. So APA is currently 76. We are at about 75, 76 kilometers. We are climbing out slowly. I'm gonna go ahead and roll out a little bit more now because we are a few degrees past the node. And we're down to about 21 degrees on our relative inclination, so huge gains. We've already come down 40 degrees. And in terms of, uh, you know, flight time, it, it really hasn't been all that bad. You know, we've only, this is only our fourth pass. And, you know, so I figure about 90 minutes for one orbit compared to the, um, I think it was a day and a half that we spent going way out to 100,000 kilometers and coming, coming back down. So in terms of flight time, this is faster. In terms of real lifetime, it's Mark not faster. <laughs> so you can see our rate coming down as we're passing the node and as we're climbing out. But we are still getting an improvement on our relative inclination, uh, about 43 degrees worth so far. because so we started out around 63.3. APA is about 120 going up. We are at about 80 kilometers. So about 15 more kilometers and our rate will be really close to zero. Go ahead and roll out a little bit more. Now that we're, you know, at the getting farther and farther beyond the, the node. So APA about 170, 180. Go ahead and pause here. Let me switch camera views. And we're gonna wrap it up for this part because we're coming up on that 20 minute mark. A Little bit more to do on this pass, but when we come back, we'll finalize this pass, check out our numbers, see how we're at, and then we'll go on and do the next pass. I'll see you in the next part.